from the creators of Cryptocurrency and Debtzilla comes Capital Gain Studios' new creation, Kaiju Exchange, the sequel to Debtzilla, in which you are going to be exchanging monster parts. You guys remember that movie Pacific Rim in which the people were going around collecting the kaiju's body parts and then manufacturing them and utilizing them in a capitalistic way in which they're going to be selling those parts for some type of luxurious means? Well, that is what this game is all about. You're going to be playing as one of the four different entrepreneurial players, gathering certain portions of the different kaijus, and then trading them in to gain won, the currency of the game. Your objective is to gain victory points, and there's four different ways to do that, whether you complete your main objective, whether you're getting six won for each coin for each purchase uh, which will give you enough for a victory point as well as uh, collecting three cards per turn you'll be taking cards away from a specific base to the point where certain types of the kaiju body parts will become less useful than others giving you more of a value for other ones there's of course the banana republic which is a group of people attempting to basically manufacture an exchange as well as attempting to win the game themselves so not only could you or your opponents win the game but the game itself can win if you're not fast Fast enough and quick enough on the draw. Can you gather the required victory points in order to win the game before your opponents do? Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how to play, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. So here is Capital Gain Studios Kaiju Exchange when we set it up for two players, but it plays up to four. And in this game, you're going to be choosing one of the four different player boards. Each of the player boards are going to represent a different type of monster part or monster type part that is going to involve currency. This one over here is going to represent the... Uh Oh, it tells you on the back, which is actually really cool as well. So this one here is going to represent Inflation Saurus, which drops ooze on the ground, which then crystallizes, and that will give them their monetary value. So we're going to start with five wand and one worker with crystals on it. And this one over here is going to be the Ponzi scheme thing, I think. It's one of the bad guys here that basically produces metal currency. And you're going to also get 5-1 as well as the metal worker. And so the same would be said for these guys here. One is the Taxopus and the other one here is Detzilla, one you've probably been familiar with if you played the original Detzilla. Each player is also going to be getting two market cards, which are your market areas for your specific player. There's the global market over here, there's the discard pile, and then there's the uh, card draw pile. You're going to set up the game based on the number of players, and the cards that you will not be using based on the number of players will be these ones here for a two, a three, and a four player game, which means additionally the discard pile is going to start with the larger valued cards. These ones are the ones that have those three on them. Just go ahead and set it aside just like this to the side, issuing that is the discard pile. Each player is also going to be getting two of these cards, which are objective cards. The rest will be over here, which you're going to be able to complete one of during the game. So in essence, you should have your board, five currency, two of these cards, two objective cards, and one worker of your board's type. There's also the Banana Republic, which is the place that does the global exchanges and whatnot. You can exchange with them, trade with them, sell to them. And at some point, value of currency or monster parts becomes worth less currency. There's also these little tokens here, which are going to represent bonuses if you have specific types of workers. So if you have two egg workers, you'll get this and you can actually put them on your player boards. They'll give you some type of bonus that tells you on the back of the board. These are favor tokens and each player is going to get a maximum of two. And on your third one, you can issue favor with the Banana Republic, which means if they win, instead you win. It's a very useful thing to do, especially if you're not winning the game. You can start pushing the uh, community to win and thusly you can win the game. Only one person can get those though. Favor tokens can also give you uh, monster parts based on what monster parts are in here so you can utilize those that way these are the four different types of monster parts you're gonna get the slime the tentacles the eggs from Detzilla and the Ponzi metal and then uh, that's pretty much the entire setup for the game there's also this extra die here which is going to be rolled during the banana republic phase which based on the number that you roll will issue a part to them thusly filling up the board allowing you to trade and purchase from them as well that is the setup for the game. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I will show you how to play a round or two, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review of the game Kaiju Exchange. So here we have a two player game set up for Kaiju Exchange. So we're not gonna be using anything else for the other players, which would include these favor tokens. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this one and this one as well. 
These are things that they can be earned through the Banana Republic, and then, of course, the favor for the Banana Republic, which I guess we can just put right over here, I suppose. Every player's got their wand. There are two cards for their local demand. There are three cards here with the global demand, the discarded cards, which are the large ones, and, of course, the rest of the deck sitting here. Uh, it tells you in the setup how to set all that up. Additionally, we've got these cards, which I didn't explain really, but these are the events cards, which we know and flip over one right now to begin the game. So again, you flip over one of these cards here, and then based on what it says is what is going to happen. And I think with this one specifically, it says that you would have to, uh, you can exchange two resources for one of any type that you would like. Get out of here, dog. And uh, additionally, uh, after you went ahead and done that, then you're going to go ahead and see who goes first. So in this case, the player who gets to go first is the player with the blue board. And the blue boarded player is going to get to go first because it's based on color, but the first player marker will change throughout the game. So after you decided to play your turns and you flipped over your event card, then you're going to go ahead and let each player take their turns individually. The first thing that will happen is you're going to have to pay for your workers. Right now he has one worker, it's the blue one here, and you have up to three. So it'll cost him one coin to keep that worker. After that, he can then gain two of the kaiju parts per type of worker. So right now he's got this metal worker, so he can get two metal parts. If he had any of these other colors, he would take these other colors that are associated with them. After that, you're going to go ahead and be able to trade with players. So if any other player had any things that you want to trade with for money, for parts or whatnot, you can go ahead and do that. Then you can go ahead and uh, trade or act with the Banana Republic. And there's two things you can do with the Banana Republic. The first thing is you can spend two of the same type of monster part, and you can place it on its corresponding track, to gain two points or two won, the currency of the game, or a favor. So you could choose either two or one of these guys. The other thing you could choose to do, if you had a favor, you could spend an additional coin and take two uh, monster parts from the Banana Republic's board and put them into your storage. Your storage is limited to 10 though, and if you get any more than that, it'll cost you to keep things, so be aware of that. After you decided to do stuff with the Banana Republic or not with them, you'll go to the upgrade phase. And the upgrade phase is going to allow you to buy additional workers for four, or exchange your worker for three. So if your board was filled up and you wanted a different type of worker other than the maybe three blue ones you had, you could exchange one for one of the other colors. In this case, I do have four wands, so I'll go ahead and spend that. And then I will, hmm, pick up a new worker. So I'll go look at the cards in my hand. I've got blue and I've got these eggs. Neither will be good for me here. I'll just take this green one here and hope for the best for later and put it in the slot, which means I only get one more worker left I can build. Then, after I've done that, I'm not going to choose to exchange anything else. I've got no more money, so I'm going to move on to the business phase. I can complete, during the business phase, one of my objectives, and you can only do this once a game, and these are the two different types of objectives that there are, and they have required um, costs of monster parts. They give you a victory point, and they give you currency, which is the wand. Or I can complete up to three local slash global requirements. So in this case, if I had two tentacles, I would get two one. If I had two eggs, I'd get two one. Or in this case, these are eggs, and this one here is going to be that slime crystallization thing. Unfortunately, I don't have the required parts for any of these things. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and trade with the Banana Republic here, giving them these two here. And thusly, I'm going to go ahead and get two currency. So I can get two one, which will help me for the next uh, time that I have to pay for my two workers here. After that, uh, we would go on to the refresh phase, which means you're going to be discarding the card of ha the hand of cards you have and placing them here and drawing two new cards from this deck here and placing them over here. If uh, these are all empty, you will go ahead and replace them, but in this case they are not. So even if there's just one left, you're not going to replace them. Then you would uh, go on to the next player, and the next player would be doing the same thing. They would pay for their workers, in which case they'd pay one. Then they would go ahead and gain two of their types per worker. So I'd go ahead and gain these two green crystals here. Then I would trade with players if I wanted. In this case, if I had kept these, I could trade with him. Uh, they'd be choose to if I want to do anything with Banana Republic, or upgrade or change workers. I don't know. I guess I guess it's not a bad idea to get another worker, so I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll take, let's see, I'll take these guys here and place that there. And then, of course, the business phase. I have these in my hand, which was nice because I can discard this, and I can then spend it, I'll put it over here, for 2-1. So applying that will get me 2-1, and I'll put this in my stack over here. I don't have anything else left, so in that case, I'm going to go ahead and discard my hand, draw two new ones, and potentially choose to fill this or not. 
after that, both players have acted, so it would move on to the Banana Republic's phase. And that's pretty simple how it works. Basically, you're going to roll a die and determine what resource it gets. That'd be a one, which means one tentacle. Oh, sorry, not these. These guys here. Yeah, I got a little tentacle on that track. And then after that, you're going to determine if they can complete any global demands. And if they can, these global demands will be placed under their board as a victory point. And the Banana Republic wins if they get eight of these victory points. So if they had, for instance, put a big guy here, if I had one egg or if I had one crystal in the Banana Republic area, that is going to translate to two victory points for each of them. But in this case, that does not occur. So what happens is the next phase of the game will go on. You'd flip over a new card and you would continue playing the game. You would get, of course, more expenses for the workers. So make sure you have two on for two workers and three for three, because if you don't have enough pay for certain things, it's going to cost you. Or you're going to lose certain workers. Additionally, in this game, when you complete three of these or these combined, you're actually going to get to choose which one of the three that you completed and place it under your board as a victory point, because if you can get six victory points, you win the game. Another thing to note, too, is that, of course, this deck is going to eventually run out or uh, eventually get into the discard pile. And when that happens, you're going to go ahead and shuffle them and deal out another set of cards. And that could involve these ones here, which are a lot bigger, three for four, one. And of course, as people pull out cards and place them under their board, certain cards will get removed, which will make other items more valuable throughout the game. And that is the basic idea of the game. The way you're going to win is you need six points and you're not gonna get all of your points by these cards here because these cards will eventually run out. But you can get points for having three of the same worker color. You get one point for each six one you have, and you can get one point for each three cards that you turn in during your turn and score one of them as a victory. If you only do two or one, that won't give you a victory point and you have to put the cards back in the discard pile. And then finally, when you complete your main objective, just one of these, you can only do one, that will give you a victory point as well. And it tells you on the card there specifically. Whoever gets six victory points is the winner of that round and will ultimately become the champion of the Kaiju Exchange. And like I said before, if the Banana Republic ends up getting eight of these guys here, that is going to do it for them. And the only other way to win, of course, is if you earn enough favor with the Banana Republic to the point where you get three favor tokens. This will actually become a new winning way for you to win the game, where if they win instead, you will win, as opposed to having to actually fight the player for six points. That is the basic idea for the game. Let's come up and I will give you my review. Kaiju Exchange, a game in which you're exchanging kaiju body parts that fills the role of that one subplot in Pacific Rim into an entire board game, while also indulging the Detzilla franchise and utilizing the cryptocurrency. Yeah, they're all kind of part of the same world, but the fact that it's got this movie aspect to it, so it feels like you're watching or playing a series of movies, really, really cool. And the fact that they actually add on the back of every player board the basic idea of each of the different kaijus and why they exist and how they function function as an econ economic resource of sorts or a marketplace and also function as physical body parts that will help people out. So for instance, the, the newest character here is, is the octopus. Let me go ahead and find out which one that is. Here it is. The Taxopus was summoned by the ancient Egyptians during 3000 BC to build uh, to help build a great empire. Rulers who got too greedy and overdosed on the power of the Taxopus would eventually be punished by its wrath. Uh, Taxopus tentacles were found to be imbued with enhancing healing capabilities, boosting the effects of any tonic or medicine it mixed into. Even consuming the tentacle itself in any form provided a soothing effect. So this is the new kaiju, is the is the Taxopus, which is part talking about taxation, part talking about kaijus, and then of course utilizing their body parts. Very, very interesting. I want to see a Taxopus uh, Detzilla expanded creature. Uh, nevertheless, of course, there's also the Banana Republic, and it functions just like a Banana Republic would. And uh, how it focuses is, is a basic generic market that where all the resources go and how you can help trade with them. But they're always going to want more than what you have to offer, so their trades are always not the greatest. But it's good for them, and they have a chance of winning the game as well if you're not careful. Or if you're smart and you join up with them early enough, you can actually 
corner the market to an extent, extent with them, utilizing them to basically trade with other players to manipulate the game in order for you to win. Uh, as the game progresses, less body parts are worth, uh, certain body parts are worth less and other body parts are worth more. And that'll depend on who takes what cards and places them under the board because as you take these cards, like Robo Advisor or the Cure for Cancer, and hide them under your board as a victory point, then in fact the the game is going to be more difficult for you to gather those specific resources to use on other cards because there's a limited number of cards that you can go ahead and utilize. There's also specific ways in which you can place certain workers on your board as combos that will give you benefits provided the fact that you have to use the same type of resources and it might get challenging or tricky depending on the number of players in the game what cards are being put under those screens so you get a little nervous as it goes on. Uh, this game, I specifically, my first game, went and went for the, with the Banana Republic when I could, and it got close. I had a seven or six different victory points, but Grant ended up pulling it off by gathering a majority of different ways of getting victory points. And it's to the point where you're, sometimes you're kind of creeping up on it, and all of a sudden you can hit it as the game gets progressively more challenging. You get more and more resources, and you're trying to control resources for characters and whatnot. Anyway, it's got this econ economical feeling of the game. It's got this interesting kaiju mix of transporting body parts, and it's all done in a comedic theme. It's got some really nice artwork. If you like Debtzilla and cryptocurrency artwork, this is the same, I'm going to guess this is the same artist as those games, and the same feel, the same style. These games all have their own unique way of playing them, but they all feel very connected in their own way as well. Overall, I enjoyed this game. A uh, couple things, you better be careful when joining the Banana Republic, because if you're too late on the mark, you might not be able to get them the victory points they need to win the game, thusly guaranteeing yourself a defeat feet and vice versa when you're playing as the characters make sure you realize which types of cards you want to place under your board because depending on the type of types of resources that you're creating or the types of resources you necessarily do not want to uh cards you don't want to put under the board because then they're gone forever and you're stuck with useless resources that the banana republic now has a ton of and has no interest in buying from you or if they do buy it from you it's worth very little <laughs> I'm not salty at all, I promise. Overall, though, it's a fun game that involves the economy, and I think those people who enjoy a little bit of humor mixed with a little bit of uh, bidding and all that kind of stuff, it's kind of—it's just interesting as to how it functions out. But I really enjoyed this title. I think anybody that liked their previous games are going to definitely enjoy this one, and I strongly urge you to take a look down below at the Kaiju Exchange and see if you'd like to pick it up on Kickstarter right now. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that little notification bell button there in the corner. It does help us. We do really appreciate it. As well as taking a look at the game Kaiju Exchange. Now, honest to God, my favorite game is going to be of theirs, the uh, Detzilla, just because of the craziness that involves. But this has a really cool added, like, sequel feeling of gathering the monster parts after defeating those monsters and I think for most of you that own that game you'll probably want to pick up this title as well and if you have neither seen neither of these two titles maybe you want to go ahead and check out my previous review of Deathzilla as well also uh, cryptocurrency anyway check out our YouTube and our uh, not YouTube our website unfilteredgamer.com that's the one where you go and check out our blog post giveaways kickstarter lists and more our live stream every Wednesday at 7.30pm PST and thank you guys for watching i look forward to exchanging kaiju body parts with you next time i mean that's weird it's a really weird idea i mean i like it but it's it's weird